let's talk about ballet a little bit. Okay, so um, let me give you some some tips about how to use the classes that we just put up. Um, because as you, I think many of you notice, I am um, reading your comments, responding to as many of them as I can, or as many of that I see. YouTube comments kind of, I don't know, it's not always consistent. So if, if I miss you, it's, it's not because I didn't want to comment, it's just because it's, you know I probably didn't see it. Um, email is a better way if you really need me to, under, to, to see um, your question or if you're, especially if you're sending me links, especially links, if you can email those to me, like if you want me to look at a particular video, um, it's just better, it's easier for me that way to, to organize everything. But so I appreciate that you're talking to me and I'll tell you why. Um, obviously when I create things, it's, I'm trapped by my own perspective, right? And my own expertise actually, right? So, um, it's really important that you, that I understand how you receive it. And you are telling me, many of you, so please keep doing that, keep talking to me, okay? Even if you don't get a response right away, it's, it's not that I don't see it, it's just there's a lot of them, and so I'll do my best. But keep talking to me and tell me what your experience is. Um, if you can send me a video clip with your questions, this is gonna be much better for you, much easier for me. And the way to do that is just, you, just film, you, you don't have to film that much. It's just some demi plays, some tondus, you know, whatever else you want, but just short little clips, maybe even one exercise at a time. Just send me your plie combination, that's fine. But if you can, you can just do it on your phone, you can set it up or have someone do it. It, it doesn't have to be, you know, like produced, just a simple thing. Uh, from the front on FOSS and from profile if you would, okay? And then I can give you like a really useful uh, response versus just typing, you know, based on your description, okay? So then I can really see you. Okay, so um, I may have mentioned this one time before about we needing, we being the ballet world, needing new rituals, and we do. And these new classes are a chance to kind of, to, to do that. So I don't know, I'm trying to think of an analogy that I can use for, this is not gonna go over well with some people, but um, it's kind of like a, a, something like a baptism in a sense where you just get to start fresh. You know, that's what I see our program being. You just get to start fresh. What has happened to you, obviously you don't forget about it. And if you wanna share that stuff with me, you're welcome to do so. Um, so it's not that we, you know, we just ignore the past or, or what has occurred, but we just go, okay, given all that, but you have arrived here. You've arrived here. So however that happened, but you're here now, and if you're listening to me right now, well, you've arrived in a good place for yourself, right? This is not about me, it's about you. And so let's do this. So I, look, I, I know some of you have asked me about my bio. I don't even have a bio anywhere because the way I feel is I just show you my work and then it's for you to decide if that's something you want to do. But I understand you want to know some things about me. So I, I trained in ballet quite seriously for about seven, eight years, something like that, here in California. Uh, so from age um, 18, 17, 18 to, <laughs> the details are getting fuzzy, to about 25. And then I went to Russia after that. And from that point, I focused on cho being choreographer and teaching and, and more of that. Although I had to take classes there for another about three years. And then my body just was wrecked. So I just had enough of that. Um, so that's just a little bit, little bit of the bio. So you understand that I've, I've trained and performed on stage and I've done musicals and choreographed a bunch of stuff. So I've done, I just didn't make a career of dancing because I never wanted to do that. I got into ballet to be a choreographer. Anyway, so that's that. Um, so let's start with a new ritual. And I said that to say this, sorry. From my experience, my memory, every time we step up to the bar, you know, we do like this, right? We just stiffen up, we tense up. And it's not our fault, this is just the reaction that, you know, ballet produces. Any um, when you're trying to, to develop strength and coordination, 
within sort of your fine motor skills, that tends to happen. You tense up. It's just part of it. Now, what makes it, what compounds that natural effect is being mistreated, obviously, right? So if you're in a stressful environment that's stressful to you in ballet, which ballet is just everywhere that way, you know, where you're being judged and, you know, <clears throat> compared to other people and you're comparing yourself and, and all of that psychological horror show that exists there, um, that's just going to make it just an order of magnitude worse. Okay? And so one of the reasons our bodies get hurt is because of that. That's just, that's just a fundamental source of future injury. And then you, you, you know, again, it's a compounding process. You start using mm, more strength than is necessary to execute a step, or you use less strength to execute a step. Either way creates this tension. So if you don't use enough, and this is mostly what happens, people are just f flopping around, parts of your body that are not under your control, so if things are moving around your back, it's going to tense up. So you're, trying, you're moving your legs and nothing's attached. Nothing's supporting that leg movement, so things move and then you get hurt. Or if you try too hard and you just bear down on your, on your legs and on your body like this, things tense up and you can get hurt. Here's the thing. When you first start placing yourself, you're going to feel a little bit of that bearing down, a little bit, right? Some more than others. And that is okay in the beginning. This is just how it begins. Your body just is so unused to that coordination that it's going to feel that way. You're going to tense up and, you know, you're going to get, you know, you're going to need to maintain your body. And we're going to do a, a separate class for body work because you all need it. Everybody that does this kind of work, anyone that exercises period needs body work. You, you'd be amazed how much injury and, and pain and discomfort can be relieved by just daily or, you know, semi-daily, very easy body work. No, no hard elbows and, and no needing for all this. It's very, very, very simple. And if you do it consistently, you know, you just get longevity as well, by the way. You get longevity, whether you're dancing as a career or not, you still get longevity out, more longevity out of your mobility. So to be able to move around, right? Here's the ritual that I want you to, to give it a try. You decide, but you give it a try. So instead of stepping up to the bar, you know, and just st stressing out right away, stiffening up, or worrying about whether you're doing it right or wrong. By the way, I don't like terms like right or wrong. Right or wrong is like a moral, words for morality. Here's the thing, and we need to, we need to have a common frame of reference here before I give you the, this. There's a, there's, there are, there's a difference between an observation, I'm talking about a teacher looking at you or you looking at yourself, but that's, it's more about like when you're in a class and a teacher's looking at you and responding to you. There's an observation, there's a correction, and then there's educating. These are three different things. Observations are absolutely useless to everyone. So if you're taking class and teacher says, well, your foot's sickle, you know, your butt's sticking out. This is useless. This is, this is nonsense information, it doesn't mean anything. And it's basically just kind of an insult or it kind of makes you feel like you're somehow not doing something right when in fact you just haven't been taught how to do it and your body isn't prepared. So it's nothing to do with you. It's just the teacher doesn't know what they're doing and that's all they know and they were treated that way. Okay. Now what about a correction? Because that's a word we use in ballet. What about a correction? I don't even like that word. And we should choose our words as wisely as we can. I know that might be funny coming from me because I sometimes shoot off, but a correction means that something's wrong. When we think about we have to correct something, it means we did something incorrect. And again, that is not what you are doing. You are learning something for the first time. We, everything is that way, right? So you're not doing something incorrect, you're just trying to learn it whenever you decide to learn it, right? So I don't even like that, I don't like corrections, although I may use it sometimes because it's just part of the, the language of, of, of ballet. 
But what I think of is, well, I'm just educating you. I'm giving you more information than you had the day before yesterday, right? Because I understand that it is a process, right? And, and the, the great mistake that Bali education has made, and, and, and more so in the last 30, 40 years, is they try to, to make a young body or a first-time body, so adults, right? Look like a finished dancer from the past without understanding the process. This is tragic. Okay, so all, all you get by trying to make a person's body who's untrained look like a trained body, look like a trained body, you get a damaged body. And when your body's damaged, it's very difficult to to feel, to, you can't, I don't think there's a way, and I've, I've been damaged in a variety of ways. It's very difficult to have, let's say, let's say a positive mental health when your body's hurt it, it, or when you're sick. Like just imagine when you get the, you know, get a cold, even a cold or a sinus infection or something that just makes you miserable for a couple of days. You know, you, you're not, our mental health is part of our physical health and this is how this works. So we need to get our body strong and coordinated. That's step one. And then we can see where we're at at that point. So, rambling a little bit, back to the spot. So step up to the bar, take a couple breaths. They don't have to be any particular kind of breath. They, they don't have to be in through the nose or out of the mouth, any of that. Just take a couple breaths, however many you want, right? Start in a wide second, right? Especially if you're a little bit older like me, start in a wide second. Right? Because you're not even going to establish your second until you get Plie and Tondu really dialed in anyway. So it's not that big of a deal. And just, you know, warm up your, your core, your belly button, the in, and your buns, your butt. Straighten your legs as much as you can without releasing these two things. So you just begin and you do micro plies, micro plies. It means your knee basically just softens, you know, according to the classes. Do, do four. You know, shake a few things out. Try first, try foreign first. Try foreign first, micro plies, right? Micro plies. It isn't about the plie, it's about your placement, right? Step into second, you can do the same second, maybe a little smaller, depends on how you feel. Do another four, do another four. And maybe do some ball toe, ball toe, four of them. You know, and maybe don't even close yet. Just do ball toe, ball toe, and step out of it. Closing is very, very difficult. Closing is, it, closing is the, the work, more so than the opening. And I'll, I'll teach you all that. So you can do exercises like Tondu. You can just go out, hold, maybe ball toe, and step away, you know? You don't have to just do a routine every day like this because what we're doing is working, we're just trying to strengthen and coordinate our body. So, what, so because what I sense from what you're saying is that um, there's, you're afraid, I, I feel like there's some kind of, not fear, but um, a little anxiety about how to start or you, know, you don't want to get it wrong. And I, I would like to encourage you not to worry about it. You're gonna be fine. You're gonna be absolutely fine. Um, because I've designed these classes knowing all of that, how it all, how, what your experience has basically been and where you are and where you want to find yourself. And so there is no way to get it wrong, right? There's just working on it, just working on it. There is no right, there is no wrong, there's just you're working on it. And so when, when something doesn't seem right to you or you send me your footage, I'll give you more information. It's not a correction because you did it wrong. It's not, uh, certainly not an observation. I'm just telling you, okay, here's some more information for you. Or I've given you the information, but there's a f multiple points and I'll just focus you to the point that I feel like you need. So it's not even that you need more information. Sometimes you just need to let me focus your mind on the important bits, okay? So that will be kind of our relationship going forward is just, it, you're not gonna get it wrong. I, I promise you're not gonna get it wrong. If you follow the classes as I give them in order, as best you can. And now the only, I have to put in, mm, so now if you are integrating this work into other, like you're taking ballet classes, you're a dancer, you're doing what you're doing, 
Um, that's more complicated and we have to work through that. But for those who are just focusing on doing this right now, you, you, you really can't get it wrong. You're not going to get it wrong. You're not going to get it wrong even if you're a dancer, this part of it. What you do out there, this is trickier and, and you know, I'm going to help you with that. Um, and let me leave you with one last thought because I, I want to give you kind of a, a big picture thought here, okay? This, this is what ballet is in this context, okay? Ballet, ballet Conrad, let's put it this way, this thing that we're doing is just, consider it's like a train. You're on a train. The train is moving. And this train only moves forward. But within the train, you can move forward with it. You can move backwards. You can move in different directions, right? So sometimes in training, and this is not something you can really help. It's just what it is. Sometimes you're going to feel like you're just standing still. You're not progressing. You're not progressing. Sometimes, you know, um, if I'm being honest, like Svetlana, um, you know, as a woman during uh, her time of the month, it, you know, it's, it's, she either is it's kind of we just maintain for a few days or she feels like sometimes that she's going backwards, but she's not. The train is still moving forward, right? So you're going to feel various ways because your body, you're not used to the sensation of placement. You know, now for those who are starting from scratch, you, you're not really going to have too much of that feeling because you're just starting from the beginning fresh. But I think a lot of you are starting and have previous experience. It's, it's going to feel, it's going to feel to you odd. And that's why I want you to check with me, film yourself and show me so I can tell you like, no, you're doing fine. And you are going to do fine. It's, it's no doubt about it. But just understand, maybe keep that analogy somewhere in your mind where the train is still moving forward. I'm still at the front with the hat and the thing and just saying, we're going forward no matter what. But it might feel differently to you. So I'm, I'm going to leave you with that. And um, keep communicating with me. Keep talking to me as much as I can, you know, especially because we're all still trapped, kind of, at least in this country. So, yeah, talk to me, okay? Okay.